start with the, some one of the more exciting things let's put together the cowling okay so the first thing you're gonna need to do is make sure now if you, if you followed my 3d printing tuning video for the settings I told you not to put a brim on the inside of these holes and the reason being I didn't want you to cover up where the magnets go so here's a print I did this is kind of like when you're in watching the uh, food network and it's like here's what we made and an hour later, haha, it's all perfect, right? It's like when they pull the casserole out of the oven, it's like, how did they do that? Through the magic of TV television. Ooh. Corny jokes aside. Anyway, so you're going to need to basically test fit these magnets. Make sure that they sit flush with the surface. You can push them in with your fingers. You should be able to. Do not... Uh, whatever you do, don't, don't be tempted to use your soldering iron to push these magnets in heat destroys the magnetism okay so you, uh, ask me how i know that I, I did it a couple times um yeah so what'll happen is you'll you'll put these magnets in and then the cowling won't stick on and you'll be like what the heck these don't work at all it's because they deteriorated from the heat so don't don't pry to heat insert these um i put them down okay so you, first thing you're gonna do just grab the magnets put them down okay you're gonna take some super glue put them in the hole push the, the magnets in and turn it upside down on your table and push into the table. You can also use your little hammer if you want. Kind of bang those magnets in. But just make sure that they're flush. Otherwise your cowling won't sit on there right. And then, it's kind of tricky. What you need to do is you need to grab six magnets. Okay, and you need to make sure that the polarity is the correct way. Otherwise, if you go and put the polarities in the same direction, when you go to put your cowling on, it's going to push it away and it's not gonna clip on so what I suggest you do is do this take your magnets okay after you put them in the outboard right take your six magnets and do this watch one whoa come on you can do it so yeah okay drop that one take four more one two four five six okay see how i got those all on there now i know exactly what the polarity is supposed to be for these magnets so then one at a time i take the magnets off and i make sure that they're staying in the same direction and then i take that magnet okay and make sure you don't get to lose the orientation and then i put it in the matching spot and push it into the cowl and then i secure it with the super glue and uh, put a little dot, dot of super glue and then push it into place okay and that will ensure that you get the right polarity when you're putting your magnets on so that way it doesn't repel itself. So doubly, you know, measure twice, cut once on this one because you can't, you're going to find it really hard to get those magnets out. It's actually impossible without destroying it. So make sure you got that. And again, through the magic of daytime television, I have already done that here. Um, so if you need more explanation, we can make a video on that. But the other thing I've done already too is I've already put in the heated inserts i've already pushed those into place with my soldering iron um, again I, I suggest you watch some videos if you're not familiar with heated inserts so give that a shot all right now let's do the next part let's get these um let's get these bearings in place so this can be kind of tricky and i suggest you take your time because you don't want to ruin your nice you know not so cheap bearings there's four places we got to put them in i suggest you start with the outside one on the horizontal first this is going to be the easiest one this one should push in mostly and then what you can use is you can either grab a pair of um pliers let me show you let me grab my different set here i've got a set of adjustable slip um slip slip type ones Got them on their bigger setting. I'm gonna grab this, okay? And I'm just gonna squeeze that bearing in place. Notice it's a little crooked, that's okay. Take the edge of the table. It's kind of hard for me to show, but I'm gonna take the edge of the table and push it like so. Push it into the back of the table. Look at that, nice and flush. So, that's nice. 
Okay, let's do the matching side. Same deal. Actually, let's use our tweezers. So it might be a little bit easier. Take your time on this, get it right, get them set up. Don't push, push them in crooked like this or else you'll have a bad time. Try to get as square up to it as possible. Okay, that's pretty good. I'm gonna do the same thing I just did. I'm gonna put my pliers on and grab it, push it into place. When it's flush with the gear case, that's how you know you did it. See that? Awesome. Quick check, I'm just gonna drop one of my horizontal shafts in sure it all fits together check that out excellent all right pull that out let's do the vertical one i'm going to do the top one first this one's a little tricky because it's so far down there and this is why it's so important to get your precision right because otherwise these bearings don't fit perfectly in the holes i'm going to drop that down in there okay got to make sure it's relatively flat with it or square to it rather all right that's pretty good then i'm going to take remember that drift i was telling you about something with a square nose but relatively thin right maybe something around six millimeter diameter ish quarter inch diameter okay i'm going to take that put it down the bottom of the hole and i'm going to push that bearing into the right spot and one of the things i can do with this so I can put my drift punch on down in there, and then I can give it a couple of love taps with the hammer. Okay, so it's starting to go in. So I'm just gonna push. Like I said, this won't be the you know the easiest thing, but take your time on this. I know it, it's tempting to just hammer away on it. It's starting to go in. and just work it in there. All right. Let me check that out real quick. Let me put one of my shafts in. Make sure she's spinny spinnies. All right, that's pretty nice. Cool, so that's installed down in there. And that's flush with the bottom. Next, let's do the bottom bearing. Same thing here. We're gonna just drop it in. Actually, I'll show you with the tweezers. Push that in. Remember, it's flush. And then this is kind of an interesting technique. Got it. I'm curious to see if you guys got any better ideas. I take this flat-sided, basically drift punch, and I set it down on the on the bearing like this, and I support it with my left hand. And then I give it a couple of taps near near where I'm putting it the bearing in. So kind of found that to be the best solution, so it's not quite all the way in yet. So we'll put the punch back on. Check that out. Kind of clever. I don't know. Kind of ham-fisted, but it's flush. It's nice quick install so something with squarish sides that you can hammer on would be nice like I said if you got any other better ideas I'm all ears and now I'm just gonna check the fit between the gears right we're trying to make sure that they're concentric to one another otherwise the shafts aren't gonna they're gonna run kind of funny so I'm just pushing that through and I'm just gonna grab that give it a little push just kind of small area Excellent. All right, that's through. Nice. All right, so make sure it doesn't go all the well. You can grab it back out with a pair of pliers, but just make sure it spins relatively easy. Yeah, that's smooth. Nice and smooth. All right, so take your, you know, those pliers and pull that shaft all the way back out. All right, so your bearings are installed. That's like one of the hardest parts. Now it should be. <laughs> A lot easier from here on out. That's the hardest part of this. All right, next let's work on um, 
Okay, I guess kind of want to stay on the uh, this this side. Also, too, I guess this is kind of why a problem with the white filament is that it gets really dirty relatively quickly. Just keep that in mind. It looks nice, but the black is way easier. It doesn't show any dirt or anything. So we are gonna grab. Oh, did I lose it? Where's it? Oh, there it's. We're gonna grab this single M3 nut. Okay. And. So I, you might be wondering, okay, how do we secure the, the motor? That's what this little slot is for. So you, this M3 nut goes in here, and then you take this M3 socket screw, and that's what fits on the side. And then you tighten that, and it squeezes the motor together. So you put the motor in. Okay, it fits in. Sockets in like that, nice. But you'll say, hey, it's going to spin while it's running. Well, yeah, of course. So what you do is you drop this nut in the hole, okay? And the hole is sized so that the nut can't spin. And then what you do is you basically just put the screw in. And you take your, let's see, I think it's a two millimeter Allen key. Oops. And this was a this is an old version of the print. I've, I've since tightened up the um, the spacing in this hole for this nut, so it's a lot easier to get to get going. In this old version I had it kind of it wasn't tight enough of a hole. So you, sometimes I take like a an Allen key and I put a little spacer in or something to just hold that nut like that. That way it doesn't spin on me. Like I said, this is this is an older version of the print. I've since fixed this in subsequent versions that are uploaded to my website. All right, and you can see that the nut is grabbing as I'm turning. And now as I tighten this nut down, what it's gonna do is it's gonna squeeze that gap. And look at this already, it's getting a lot tighter. I can't, I can't move this as easily. And then when you really lock this down, Like I said, this is an old version of this one. But, and don't go crazy tight on this, right? Because you'll just snap. you would probably end up snapping something. When you really tighten that down, man, that, that motor isn't going anywhere. So I'm going to actually loosen that motor up and take it back out. But you can leave this loose now. You just pull the motor out. Set that back outside, so that's good. Um, the next thing I want you to do is I want you to grab that three millimeter drill bit, or if you're in Imperial units, a number 32 drill bit. So if you don't know what that means, this is a set of numbered drill bits. This is a Harbor Freight set. Numbered drill bits are wire size drill bits. Precision. In increments you can usually get these at I don't even know if Home Depot or Lowe's sells these but you can definitely get them at Harbor Freighter online you don't want fractional fractionals it's not gonna have the precise sizes we need but a number 32 number 32 fair call is about 0.116 inches and a three millimeter three millimeters is equal to 0.118 so this is almost perfectly the same size and all I want you to do is you're going to clear out the holes. I already did it on this one, but you're going to clean it, clear out the holes on the mount. And you don't want to egg these out. You just want to give them a quick burp through with the drill bit just to make sure that they're chased. Because that's where this clevis pin is going to go when we mount to the boat. So I'll show you this right now. And you want to make sure I actually I drilled this out with the wrong size drill bit. You can see it's a little loose. That's a little too loose for my liking, but that's what this pin is for. So I'm just gonna leave it on there for now. Okay. All right, let's start building the vertical shaft. Set that aside. So you're gonna grab one of your uh, shaft couplers and you're gonna need to grab that 32 mil, uh, number 32 or three millimeter drill bit. And you're gonna run that through the center bore. We're just gonna clean that up. Just real quick, we just want to make sure that our vertical shaft fits up through there. Should be a little bit snug. Yeah, it's perfect. Like so. Okay, pull that back out for me. 
All right. Now, what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna take, so remember I said we have these set screw combos with a three millimeter nut, so it's a six millimeter M3 uh, set screw. What we're gonna do is, see how that's got that little notch in it? We're gonna drop that nut down in that hole. All right, so this should be a really tight fit. Okay. And what you're gonna have to do is it should align itself to the flats like so of the uh, of the screw. So the point should be, so a, one of the hex points should be pointing out. Now put it on the table and push down, get it to seat so it's flush. And now what you have to do in there in here, you need to make sure the center of that nut lines up with the center of this hole. So if you take your tweezers, and I'm putting these in here, and I'm prying up to pull the uh, the bore of that, or the um, the nut, upwards. Other, conversely, you can just take like a screwdriver and Allen key and just push. It's a little harder. But I have successfully aligned that nut to that hole. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my set screw. This is where that 1.5 millimeter Allen key comes in. And I'm going to put it in the hole. You may need to chase this hole a little bit. It should be decently sized. Mine feels nice. I didn't chase it with the drill bit. But you're trying to get it to thread into that nut. Now if it doesn't thread in, you got something wrong, don't try to force it then you're just going to chew up the threads on either of those. It should go in easily. Perfect. And it's kind of hard to see. Actually, right there, you can see it. See the set screw coming through that center hole right there? That's what we want. We're going to use that to secure onto the flat of the shaft. So one, of the, one side of this flat has an 8 millimeter flat on it, and the other has a 6. We want the 6 millimeter side to go inside of here. And I want you to face it so that that flat is parallel to that set screw we just put in, okay? And you're going to push it up in there. Make sure that the set screw is backed out all the way. Or not all the way, just, just so that it's not covering up the hole. All right, and now I'm going to push down. Maybe even give it a little up tap again. Nice. A little bit more. All right, now hopefully you can see this. I just want that shaft to be flush with the surface of the coupler. I don't want it to be any higher, and I'll show you why a little later, but that's as far, far as I want it to be. I just want it to be flush with this surface, okay? Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tighten up that set screw, and you can use a little bit of blue Loctite on this. I would recommend that, because it's not like you need it to really come out. Don't go too tight on this, you don't want to strip it out, but make sure it's tight, because if this slips, you'll have to, it's not hard, but you just have to take it apart again and tighten it up. So that's secured to that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my top hat looking spacer, and I am going to push this onto the shaft. Oops, looks like I gotta chase this with my drill bit a little bit. Okay. I'm going to slide this over with the top hat, basically a top upside down top hat, and push it onto the shaft, and push it all the way up, so it's flush with the shaft there. Next, I'm going to take one of my little 10, or a 3 millimeter by 0.2 millimeter thick shims, and I'm going to drop it on the shaft, like so. Perfect. All right, now what we can do is we can grab our outboard and we're gonna drop this in. Don't lose that shim because that's what keeps it from contacting that bearing down there, but you're gonna insert it. Actually, before I do that, I am gonna squirt just a tiny amount of grease into this area. I've got a syringe filled with grease, kind of cool. And I'm just gonna liberally apply some grease in here Like so. Oops. 
I lost my washer. Oh boy. Oh, got it. Jeez. It's fiddly work. Yuck. All right, take two. So you're gonna push that down to that shaft. Watch this, should fit down nice and flush. And there should be no rubbing. You should be able to easily rotate it with your fingers. See how we got clearance between everything? That's nice. And it's easily rotating and it went all the way through. That's perfect. All right, and you'll notice I got the flat, that eight millimeter flat down there. Perfect. Next, what we're gonna do, you're gonna push that a little bit downward with your pliers or something. Okay, you just want it a little bit sticking out, that shaft. Just a little bit, just like that. I'm gonna grab one of these, another one of these three millimeter point two shims. I'm actually gonna grab two. And the reason is I'm gonna start with two shim so 0.4 millimeters of shim for these gears and everybody's going to need to adjust this to their you know to the tolerance of their how they cut the shafts how their 3d printer worked right so that's why you know if you want to get this reliable that's what we we need to have those shims next i'm going to grab one of my bevel gears doesn't matter which one and i'm going to this is kind of tricky but you got to put it in okay Take note of where the, the flat is on this shaft. So I'm going to push this out a little bit more so I can see where the flat is. Okay, so there's the flat. And I'm going to put this. I want the set screw to, to be parallel to the flat. So I'm going to put it in. And I'm going to use my tweezers to get it in position. Perfect. Do you see that? Now I'm going to push... Without rotating anything, I'm going to push that shaft up so you can still see the, the flat. Okay, now I'm going to take my tweezers and set that bevel gear down. And then I'm going to tighten that set screw. Oops. Awesome. So there you go. There's the first shaft. And there shouldn't be any binding or anything. This should, should be relatively smooth. This will wear in a little bit as we run it, so it's okay if it's a little bit bound, but it, it should it should be finger loose, right? You should be able to do this with it and rotate it. Otherwise, stop, go back, you might have a problem. Um, I also recommend Loctite on these little set screws, so you can, you can do that too if you're... All right, next, let's do the horizontal shaft. This is the one that's got the threading on it, okay? First thing we're gonna do is, what are we gonna do? Let's do this. Let's take our dog screw thing, our dog clutch, dog teeth. You know what I'm talking about, this thing. Link in the description for this as well. Everything will, like I said, every piece will be in the description so that we need. Let's unloosen this with our 1.5 millimeter Allen key just so that the hole is clear through the center. Okay. And then we want the teeth facing the uh, threaded side of this shaft. So I'm gonna take it, slide it over like so. And then see how we got that, sh that flat in the middle here? That's where that set screw needs to align to. So just go ahead and tighten this loose, like loose. Like it doesn't, just so it stays on the flat. The reason is we want to adjust this later on so but we just want to key it up on that flat to start with so just start it in the middle anywhere like so then what you're going to do is you're going to go back over your pile of shims grab one come in gosh dang come in you can do it oh got it and slide that over the top like so. All right, now 
come in and put that into the, the bearings like so. And the reason we've got that, you know, eight millimeter um, flat is that way we can adjust it and move it back and forth. I guess I'll do that in a little bit, but we're gonna basically do the same thing we did with the other vertical shaft is we're gonna make sure that we're gonna put two of the uh, sh um, shims on that shaft on the inside just as a starting point, okay, like so. And then we gotta pull it back a little bit. Oops, a little too much. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to get it to fit because it's, it's already pretty close against the, uh, the other gear. You'll see what I mean in a second. Make sure this set screw is backed out. Just unscrew that a little bit. I think I can smell my GoPro overheating. Jeez, thing's hot. So that's a little too far, stick out. I'm gonna ease it back, but I don't want my shims to fall off. You'll see what I mean when I drop this in. It helps if you can rotate the uh, vertical shaft just a little bit, then take your, um, your uh, what are these things called? Pliers? No. I don't know what these are called, I forgot. Tweezers, that's right. And this is like the most fiddly job on this thing. Because you got to make sure that you don't slip the washers off or the shims off like I just did. And you also got to make sure that the flat on the shaft is in the right spot. Like so, pull that back, drop gear into position. Move with tweezers. All right, simultaneously that you have to, once you get it onto the, uh, the shaft or in position, you have to push that horizontal shaft upwards to get it to go through the gear. So it helps might help if you have a second to the hands or another hand maybe you have three hands I'm just gonna push it up and see if I get lucky I'm gonna hold it in my hand there we go all right I got it started I'm just gonna push that up oh nice okay so right off the bat I can tell that See how the shaft is sticking out a little bit? It's way too far. So I know that I gotta pull this back. It should be basically flush with the end of that or close to it. That's where the slop gets taken up. That's okay to move like that. I'm gonna take my Allen key and I'm gonna tighten it against the flat just to start with. That way it stays. And see how the, the dog is pretty far away? That's why we have that longer eight millimeter flat so that way we can adjust it to wherever we need. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna pull back on the shaft and I'm going to try to make sure that there's like as little slop between these as possible. And I'm just gonna tighten that a little bit. Oops. Alright. So this is the first part where you can check the fit of the gears. And to be honest with you, I can feel quite a bit of binding with these gear teeth. And what that means is that I'm getting basically interference on these. So, you know, it's just on the hairy edge of send it, as in it'll probably wear itself into place, you know? But I don't really want to destroy my bevel gears. So what you're, tr and what I'm talking about here is that, you know, maybe if I demonstrate this, I'll use this as a lever. There should be what's called backlash between the gears, right? So if I hold the vertical shaft steady with my, my fingernail, I should be able to rotate the bottom gear, or uh, the horizontal shaft, independent of that vertical shaft. And I don't know if you can see this, I'm trying to show it, 
There is no slop, which indicates that the gear teeth are clashing with each other. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna unloosen my set screws on both of these, well, just the one, and I'm gonna pull my shaft out. I'm gonna let the gear drop out, and I'm going to remove one of the shims. Okay, because I put two in. Let's just see those two right there. And I'm only gonna put one back in. And I'm gonna recheck the fit. All right, so I'm gonna put the shaft, the horizontal shaft back in. Grab my shim. Oh no, not again, there you go. All right, that's seated on there. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna pull this back as far as I can. Just want a little lip so that way the gear can get on it. And I'm gonna line my set screw up. Keep that flat, like so. And then I'm gonna rotate that vertical shaft a little bit to get that gear to drop into place. A little persuasion from my, whoa, too much persuasion. Just using my thumb and these tweezers to get it in the spot. I'm going to rotate it. It's actually easier if I give it a little bit of angle. And a little jiggle. Oh, got it. Bingo. I'm going to push this up. Nice. All right, now we'll push this shaft forward. And we'll tighten that gears set screw. Just a little bit for now. And now we can recheck the fitment of our gears. Actually, I got that a little too sloppy. I'm gonna loosen up my dog, slide that forward. There we go. Now I have very little play forward and back. Awesome, that feels a lot better, it's a lot smoother, it's not binding anymore. And you have to, usually what you'll find is you'll have to adjust them in pairs, right? Because if you have the gear teeth, like so, if you take one gear and you move it away, farther away from the other gear, now there's not that perfect mesh of the teeth. So even though it'll feel like it's binding less, now you might be riding on just the very edge of the teeth of the gear. So if you, take the shims out in pairs, it truly doesn't have to be that they're in pairs. All that matters is that the gears are intersecting at the right angle and that they're intersecting at the same line of action. It's kind of complicated. You can look it up. Basically it's like the pitch line of the gear where they're like actually mating. But I think you get the picture where if you're, if you move one gear relative to the other without adjusting, you have the you might shear the teeth off if they're just being loaded on the teeth. So, stuff to pay attention to. Another thing you can see is that if you look square onto this, try to set up the camera as close as possible. You can see that like, there's almost no, like it's a straight line from this gear, bottom of this gear tooth to the, to the, um, the horizontal shaft to the, the vertical shaft. There's no like big ridge there, which means that I am getting that nice engagement of the two and that one's not like this or one's not like that or one's not too much in. So I hope this is kind of painting the right picture here. It's kind of complicated, but if you get this wrong, you know, you'll ruin your gears. This is where all that reliability comes from is, is taking your time and making sure that this fits correctly. So, all right, so let's check the backlash on this. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm holding this the gear teeth of the vertical shaft with my fingernail, and now I'm gonna rotate the horizontal shaft. And I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but the horizontal gear is rotating a slight amount, which means that I've got clearance, which is exactly what I'm looking for, just a small amount of clearance. And why do I care about that? It's because 
I want to make sure that my gear teeth aren't clashing if they're so squished into each other that I have no backlash, no slop between the teeth like this. What that means is those teeth, as soon as they start spinning, they're going to grind themselves into, <laughs> into, uh, into uh, compliance. So I don't, I don't want that at all. So a little, you want a little bit of backlash. That's what you should feel. You should be able to feel this and basically wiggle it um, clockwise, counterclockwise, and feel a little slop in there. So that's perfect. And then this will, like I said, it'll, it will end up wearing itself a little bit into, uh, in the place. But I caution you, do not run it. You know, if it's really binding up and you can barely get it to turn, do not. Do not assume that it's gonna wear itself in it just might just blow up or grenade itself if it's bad enough So that's why we're taking our time here All right, cool So we've got that on next. Let's take our little propeller Oops And see how it's got the teeth on it, so we're gonna match that up with the teeth on our um, our drive dog nice and then we're going to take our plain three millimeter washer that goes on the back side of the prop just kind of helps even out the space the, or the um the force and then we're going to take our nylock nut three millimeter nylock nut and we're going to put that on the shaft we're going to thread that on there and this is where you might need a um either a socket wrench or a or a uh, box wrench or something like that so all right so i tighten that down and i'm not tightening it a crazy amount i'm just tightening it till it gets up to that that dog gear because now what we're doing is if you start tightening this nut right you're pulling you're pulling against this this gear okay and you do want that a little bit right that's called preload we're putting preload on the bearings so what i want you to do is get this up to it so that it's just barely touching the back side of that prop then what i want you to do is i want you to loosen the drive dog set screw okay and the reason is i want you to do that is because i want you to to tighten this backside nylock nut such that um we're putting preload on this on these two bearings so you'll know when it's it's too much so i can basically put this allen key in there like so so i've got a wrench to turn against and i'm going to tighten that lock nut and mind you don't tighten it too much because you'll break those bearings it's going to be really easy to over tighten but you're you're trying to feel for it right you're going to tighten up those bearings all right so I noticed something interesting after I tightened this nut, right? So the dog is loose, the dog nut is loose, and I'm tightening this nut, and it's pulling this gear and this um, the propeller together to preload those bearings. And it actually further seated the bearings, so watch out for this while you're doing it. And now look at the clearance between the teeth. There's a clear, they're not perfectly aligned anymore. I'm trying to show you this as best as possible the teeth have so if the teeth used to be meshed like so this tooth um, this gear has receded and now it's just poorly aligned on the teeth so what we have to do you know this you can see this is kind of like a game you know it's kind of labor intensive but it's kind of fun so what that means is I have to loosen the, the uh, bevel gear take this off and I need to add that that shim back onto it so Loosen that all the way up. Pull the shaft out. So I got the one shim there. I'm gonna add a second shim. And they don't have to be 0.2 millimeter shims. I just, I think it's easier. That way you don't have to buy a, if you have a shim pack laying around, you know, a metric three millimeter shim pack, by all means, use whatever you got on hand. I just find that it's easier. Oops, what am I doing? It's easier to do when you've got um, them all of the same size. All right, so I'm gonna push the horizontal shaft back in. 
Make sure those are back on my bearings, or my shaft. Push up a little bit. And that's normal for it to seat a little bit more when you tighten that up, you know. All right, drop my gear in. You're gonna be a pro at putting these, t putting in and taking the gears out by the time you're done with this project. All right, I'm gonna tighten that nut back up. You can see there's a little bit of slop in that. So then I put my wrench in there and I tighten my nut. All right, and I can feel this is like this isn't rotating smoothly anymore. That's how I know I've got too much preload on this. So I'm gonna back it off. I'm gonna back this, um, this nut off about an eighth of a turn, maybe a quarter of a turn. Recheck the, the play in this. So I'm just pulling on the shaft in and out. And there's ever so slightly a little bit of play in that. And that's, that's comfortable with me. I'm happy with that. And it looks like I'm going to need one more shim on this. So I'm going to have three here and two on this one. So I'll do that off camera, save you the, uh, the trouble. But I think you get the point. You know, this is a guess, or not a guess and check, but a, a shim and check kind of thing where you got to play with it, feel it. And ultimately, you got to make sure that this rotates smoothly. It shouldn't feel jerky or binding. If it's binding, that means you either tighten this up too much or you've got... Um, crashing between the gear teeth and obviously you can see that I've got play so I'm not crashing so I'll, I'll, I'll adjust it off camera and come back all right so I'm back and I've got the mesh set where I want it, it feels nice I tighten the nut just so it's snug it's a little bit of preload on those bearings but it still rotates nice and smooth now I'm going to tighten up the dog gear Let's lock that in place, like so, tighten that. I'm gonna tighten the horizontal bevel gear tight. And I'll do the uh, vertical one, one last time. Awesome. That's perfect. And now I, I didn't, I forgot to print this in white. I grabbed this off an older print. This is that little uh, tail cone looking piece. So this just uh, should be good enough for threads. So just hand thread on there's enough looseness in there and then this just kind of goes on the back for a little aesthetic you know extra and then just don't go crazy on that with the pliers just, just a little bit of tension is all you need so excellent and this is a um this is a counterclockwise prop but you can use a clockwise prop on this it'll be fine you know if you want to do it trying to get into some boats that have like a dual outboard setup right now so that's coming down the pipeline for future projects future videos but i want to have a counterclockwise and a clockwise you know like a maybe uh like a police boat or a catamaran or something you know if we had two of these you know like like so here's an here's an older one i built you know could you imagine you know if we have two of these side by side in unison so i'm kind of working on some some boats that i'll release 3D printed boats that'll feature that, so that's kind of cool.